Hi, thank you for joining this mini webinar. It's going to be really, really crisp and short to the point webinar. Before we get into the presentation, let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce myself. I am CA and Raja, Chartered Accountant by Qualification, a teacher, trainer by passion. I started my career as a banker, credit analyst with State Bank of India, worked for a period of four years. In very short period, I had the opportunity of becoming team leader, credit processing cell. So worked on 250 plus projects, it's 5000 crore plus size. Then came out and started my CA practice, had my practice for a period of seven and a half years alongside had this teaching training. Thanks to technology, today through online, I teach two lakh plus students all over the world, basically on banking, credit and financial analysis and majority of them are working banking executives. I'm really glad that my courses are helping them and I'm sure this course will be relevant and useful for you as well. Let's get into the webinar. Whoever attending this workshop, please take this principle to your heart, to your mind and try to teach this to as many entrepreneurs as possible. Educate the entrepreneurs, whether you be a banking executive, a credit officer or a relationship manager or a chartered accountant or cost accountant or finance manager. Okay. This is very, very important because 95% of the business units have failed only because of not understanding this principle. Only 5% of the business units are failing or becoming NPA or becoming sick company because of uh, technology, because of marketing, sales, quality, HR, legal issues. Remaining 95% of the businesses, they fail because of one single reason that is they have not understood how to utilize their funds. Let me take you through. I said funds can come from owners and outsiders and when funds come from outsiders with a commitment to repay within one year we call them as short term liabilities and using those short term liabilities short term assets can be created but short term assets is greater than short term liabilities it means automatically it gives rise to the understanding that a portion of short term assets is funded by long term funds. And what we can infer, the remaining long-term funds are being utilized for creating long-term asset. So in this way, we can break any balance sheet into these four compartments. But what's even more important is how these funds are going to be utilized. Short-term liabilities can be used for creating short-term assets. Good. Long-term funds that is basically the composition of long-term liabilities and equity can be used for creating long-term assets. Good. Long-term funds can also be used for creating short-term assets. That's ideal because that's going to give the much needed liquidity comfort for the business. Whereas there is one thing which should never ever happen in any business. Never ever divert short-term funds for long term purpose. Never ever divert short term funds for long term purpose. Because whoever have given money for short term period, they are going to ask that money, they are going to ask you to repay that money in that short term period. And if you are not going to meet that commitment, repay that in short term period, then that becomes the beginning of end of your business. Because they will go for all the legal recourses available. Just imagine the short term money was given by a banker in the form of a cash credit or overdraft and it has become due for payment. He is demanding the payment and when you look back, you don't have short term resources because you have used that money in creating some land or building or plant and machinery. So it's sitting in the form of a long term asset. So how long they will wait? If a banker, if with bank, if the loan amount has become overdue, they'll wait for maximum 90 days. Then they'll declare the account as non-performing asset and they go for uh, recovery measures, right? So that's why I say that becomes the beginning of end of a business. So never ever divert short term funds for long term purpose. I need your participation here. Look at this. There are three companies A, B, C. 
and you have information about their long term sources and short term sources total sources you have information about their long term uses short term uses and total uses i want you to digest this information i want you to digest this information spend some time and then identify which company is in trouble here is it company a or company b or company c company a they've raised long term funds of 50 they've raised short term funds of 50 so total of 100 of which 50 is used for long term 50 is used for short term company b also raised in the same pattern but of which 70 is used for long term and 30 only used for short term and c raised in the same pattern but of which 30 only used for long term and 70 is used for short term so you have to tell me like which company is in trouble let's see the results i'm going to rearrange the statement let me bring the long term sources here and i'll compare that with long term uses so let's see what is the position if you take company a long term sources and uses are same so no surplus no deficit but company b long term source is 50 long term use is 70 so there is a deficit of 20 and company c long term source is 50 long term use is 30 only so there is a surplus of 20 and now let me take short term sources i'll compare that with short term uses and let's see what is the position for company a obviously no surplus no deficit but company b they raised a short term fund of 50 and used only 30 they had a surplus of 20 and company c they raised only 50 they've used 70 they had a deficit so it might look like company c is in trouble because they had deficit and company b is comfortable because they had surplus but that's not the understanding understanding pay attention here company b they raised a long term source of 50 but they created a long term use of 70 how is that possible with 50 you cannot create 70 so from where they got the remaining 20 obvious they got that remaining 20 from here so this short term surplus of 20 with the long term source of 50 they got money worth 70 million which they have used for long term purpose and because of this reason we say company b is in trouble because company b they raised a short term source of 50 and their short term resources are only 30 it means they are supposed to repay 50 million in one year with that promise they raised 50 million but what they have done is they have created only 30 million worth of resources they have diverted simply diverted 20 million for long term purpose so within one year they are supposed to repay 50 million but they have resources only 30 million with them so whoever have given that 20 million they'll go for legal action against this company for not fulfilling the obligation for not fulfilling the promise sorry for not fulfilling the promise in this case company b they'll not be in a position to fulfill the promise because that 20 million they have invested in long term asset long term use it can be land building plant and machinery and you cannot sell that sell them just like that it will take more than a year but they will not wait for more than a year okay that's why we say company b is in trouble but if you look at company c they've raised 50 million long term they've spent only 30 million they had a surplus of 20 million and that surplus of 20 million along with short term fund of 50 million they have created short term use of 70 million and if you look at it from the other side within one year they are supposed to pay 50 million and for paying that 50 million what are the resources they have 70 million that's why we say company c is in comfortable situation okay right so this statement which helped us to uh, get more clarity is fund flow statement let me give you a real life fund flow statement it will look something like this okay it's basically part of it look here you have the sources and here you have the applications sources we basically call as long term sources application we call as long term uses like what we have seen here okay now look at this let me analyze this also so that you will get complete clarity about fund flows analysis and here i am not teaching you how to prepare fund flow statement but i am teaching you how to read the fund flow statement okay look in 2018 19 they had long term sources from operations and by selling investment of 
and these are all their long term uses they purchased planned and missionary they paid taxes they paid dividend okay so 5650 was the source 6200 was the use there was a deficit of 550 let's analyze this so what is the total source it is this 5650 okay when they had 5650 what they did they first purchased planned and missionary okay not first they purchased okay all right since they had so much of fun okay 3700 is okay because even after paying all this they'll have a surplus of 1950 and then what they are supposed to do tax is compulsory they cannot escape okay from 1950 they paid taxes of 1100 so they are left with 1950 minus 1100 850 okay when they are left with 850 they did this mistake when they are left with the long term fund of 850 only what they did they went and paid dividend of 1400 what is the amount they have 850 but what is the dividend they have paid it is 1400 how it's not acceptable right but they did that how they went and paid 1400 they faced a shortage of 550 and they have managed that shortage by using short term funds okay so here there is a deficit and this deficit was managed because they took some short term funds uh, a simple example can be a cash credit or overdraft because they wanted to pay 1400 to their uh, owners but they have only 850 so what they did that 850 plus money available in cash credit or overdraft to the extent of 550 put together they have paid dividend of 1400 so this shows their financial discipline when they have only 850 why they are paying 1400 that's not right right i mean this is not a wise approach or ideally what this business should have done when they have purchased plant and machinery of 3700 here they should have raised some long term funds so some portion of this 3700 could have been funded by long term funds and that would have left good amount of surplus so that they could have paid this dividend easily or the other way is when they have an investment to take place like this to the extent of uh, 3700 why they are paying dividend they could have used this money for funding that right they didn't do they paid dividend when they don't have adequate funds when they had only 850 they paid 1400 they simply diverted short term funds for long term purpose so this is what happened in 2018 19 in 2018 19 or ideally they could have done one thing when they are left with a long term funds of 850 they should have restricted their dividend to 850 in that case there will not be any uh, diversion of short term funds for long term purpose but even it should not be like that no because there should be some long term surplus contributing for working capital of the business here instead of contributing they have stolen the money from cash credit for paying as dividend to the owners okay see how powerful the statement is it is revealing what was hidden let's see what happened in 2019-20 in 2019-20 their funds from operations have improved significantly they have also raised money by issuing debentures so it is 7800 and from that they are purchasing plant and machinery okay they have lot of money let them it means after purchasing plant and machinery they have surplus of 5025 and uh, they want to pay taxes okay good let them pay so from 5025 taxes paid what is left over now 3325 uh, from that they want to pay dividend okay let them pay 2250 it means the balance left over is 1075 at this point they should have put up break but what they did they went and purchased an investment of 1500 when they are left with a funds of only 1075 it means this is the grave mistake which they should not have committed 1075 is the surplus 1500 investment not in their business they have purchased investments some shares or stocks of some other company by using whose money by using some short term money look they have only 1075 but how they spent 1500 the 1075 plus 425 gave them 1500 they have invested in someone else business this business is not learning from its mistakes
when they are left with 1075 they should have stopped at that level they should have ensured that this money is going for supporting the working capital requirements of the business but they didn't do okay so these kind of uh, all hidden practices will get caught will get revealed in fund flow statement in my four year of uh, strength and state bank of india the statement for which i had high regards is the fund flow statement because this is one master health checkup report which will reveal all the uh, hidden problems of the borrower i mean if at all you will get awestruck or if at all you will become unanswerable in one statement means that is fund flow statement because it is so clear okay because it shows no like uh, from where they got money where they have used see they have paid dividend in 18 19 when they didn't have money uh, they have invested in someone else business in 1920 when they did had money so this all shows the intentions the integrity of people behind the show as well not just numbers it also uh, goes deeper into qualitative aspects so that's the power of fund flow statement so develop your skill in reading fund flow statement such a such a powerful statement okay All right so with this i wish to conclude this presentation and i believe most of you would have had a bulb on moment so if you really had a bulb on moment please type bulb on thank you so much we have come to the end of this webinar and i am sure you would have really derived value from this short and crisp webinar if you wish to continue this learning journey i have an amazing opportunity for you i have published several courses on banking and financial analysis area each course costing 2000 rupees but for you i'm going to give you a special offer here we go banking credit courses bundle this includes course number 1 banking credit analysis process it's a comprehensive course with 200 plus lectures it covers financial analysis working capital term loan lc bg it's a comprehensive ever course then we have course number 2 that is how to carry out financial analysis as a banker this is going to focus exclusively on financial ratio analysis cash flow analysis and fund flow analysis then comes course number 3 how to carry out term loan appraisal and analysis as a banker it's a comprehensive course focusing on the technical aspects around project finance and term loan these are all the topics then comes course number 4 how to prepare cma report for bank loan through eight sections this course will take you through entire cma report preparation process for bank loans then we have course number 5 how to read balance sheet so if you are a non finance person this course will give you complete insight into balance sheet how to read them how to interpret them how to analyze them okay then we have course number 6 how to read sibil report by taking this course you will get a complete picture of sibil report reading process then we have course number 7 how to prepare cash budget for bank loans this course will help you to understand the concept of cash budget which is widely used in short term lending like auto credit facilities letter of credit and all so far i have introduced seven courses of 1999 each it means seven courses of value 13993 but you are going to get it only for 2599 and it is not yet over i am going to give you some more bonus course number 8 collateral securities a comprehensive study course 9 how to carry out credit risk rating for non trading entities course number 10 in this course you will learn banking credit analysis through various case studies so now it is 10 courses of value close to 20000 but you are going to pay only 2599 it is not yet over some more bonus course number 11 how to read audit report course 12 this focuses on letter of credit and course 13 focuses on financial analysis in very short duration so you have 13 courses of value close to 26000 rupees but you are going to get it for just 2599 so it is basically seven main courses and you are going to get another six complimentary courses six courses as bonus so overall it is 13 courses of value close to 26000 rupees it's 1500 plus lectures you get lifetime access for all these pre recorded courses you can access them in desktop laptop mobile iphone ipad and the overall cost is around 26000 but you are going to get it only for 
2,599. So this is a once in a time opportunity for you. Enroll now. I'll see you inside the course.